Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the living organisms. And in this context, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the classifications in the first module, then we have discussed about the evolutions, and then we also discuss about the different types of cells. So we have discussed about the prokaryotic cell and as well as the eukaryotic cell. And while we were discussing about the cell, we have discussed about the different types of molecules which are actually participating into the different types of reactions what has been happening into these organelles such as uh, we are discussing about the mitochondria or the chloroplast and we are discussing when, so when we were discussing about the electron transport chain or the uh, for the photosynthesis we discuss about the different types of molecules which are participating into these reactions. So in the subsequent uh, module, we have also discussed about the different types of biomolecules. In the previous module, we have discussed about the nucleic acid. Uh, we have So we have discussed about the DNA and RNA, which are actually going to serve as the molecule to carry the genetic information from the one generation to the next generations. In most of the organisms, the DNA is the genetic material, but RNA is also being present as the genetic material in some of the organisms. Subsequent to that, we have also discussed about the carbohydrates and its structure and functions. And uh, we have also discussed about the different types of metabolic reactions where the carbohydrates are being uh, utilized and they are actually being uh, you know, oxidized uh, to produce the energy. So we have discussed about the glycolysis or the Krebs cycles. And subsequent to that, we have also discussed about the structure classification as well as the function of the lipid molecules. Now, in the previous lecture, we have discussed about the protein structures. So we have discussed about the primary structures. We have discussed about the secondary structures. We discuss about the tertiary and as well as the quaternary structures. In addition to discussing the structures, we have also discussed about the different types of method what you can use to determine the primary, secondary, tertiary or the quaternary structures. We have discussed about the Sanger's method or the Edmund degradation method to sequence the particular protein so that you will be able to know what is the amino acid sequence uh, present in that particular protein. And then subsequent to that, we have also discussed about the, uh, the some of the experimental methods such as the X-ray crystallography or to the NMR spectroscopy. We have not done very ex extensive uh, discussion about these techniques, but there are a couple of good Mo MOOCs courses which are already been available to study these course, these uh, aspects of the structure solution by the X-ray crystallography or to the NMR spectroscopy. Subsequent to that, we have also discussed about the homology modeling and how we can be able to use the homology modeling as a computational tool to solve the uh, three-dimensional structure of a particular protein. So that also we have not discussed in detail because there are a couple of courses available and there are very good re resources are available in case you are interested to this study or you want to know more about that particular aspects. So in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the function of the proteins and we also going to discuss about how you can be able to detect the proteins in a given biological fluid. So let's start today's lecture. So in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the 
protein functions. So when we talk about the protein functions, we are actually going to discuss uh, first about the different types of functions, what the protein can actually be able to perform. So the protein functions, when we talk about the protein functions, the determination of a three dimensional structure of a protein is important for understanding its functions. As we can recall that the three dimensional structure of a protein is actually going to tell what it is going to be function and that is why it uh, people are actually going with the uh, extensive you know solutions like extensive 3D, 3D structure solution of the different types of protein so that you can be able to know what is the function of that particular protein. Uh, I am sure you might have heard about the different types of structural genomics projects what is running in different parts of the world and different scientists are involved in that particular activity so that they can be able to solve the structures of all the protein what is present in a particular genome of an organism and that is how you can be able to know what function this particular protein is actually going to uh, perform. And depending on this information, you can be able to utilize that information to either the uh, you know develop the drugs right so in, because if, if you know that particular function is be, is crucial for that particular organism then you can be able to disrupt that interaction and that's why the people are doing like for example you can have the mycobacterium structural genomics or uh, malaria structural genomics and so on right so the purpose of these structural genomics uh, project uh, for the particular uh, pathogenic organism is that we want to know the function, the three dimensional structure of the particular protein so that in the, we are also going to deduce the function of that particular protein and if the function is very crucial then we can be able to you know disrupt the function by the de developing the different types of drugs or the, the molecules and that is how we can be able to design the new drugs. So that is why the 3D structure of a protein is important for understanding its functions. In uh, prokaryotic as well as the eukaryotic cell, the protein is the main molecule to perform many functions such as the enzymes to catalyze the various chemical reactions. It has working as an adapter molecule for the different types of ligands. Then it is a messenger molecule to relay the signal within the cell to produce the factor to generate the defense response against the pathogenic organisms. So it has a different types of role. The, the, it could be a role in catalyzing the different types of chemical reactions. It could be adapter molecule for the different types of ligand and that is how it is actually going to participate into the different types of biological responses. And then it also can relay the information from the one part of the cell to another part of the cell or it actually can work as a messenger like right? so that it can actually go from the one cell to another part of the another cell and that is how it actually can convey the message. So categorically we are going today in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the protein as an enzyme and then we are also going to discuss about the um, function of a protein as the reversible binding of the protein to a ligand. In this particular category when the you are actually going to uh, see the function of a protein as an adapter molecule, it is actually going to participate into different types of functions like for example it is going to work as a metabolic intermediate as a substrate so that is going to be a ligand for the protein molecules. Then it also can function as a cell surface receptor so that it actually can receive the ligand from the different sources and that is how it actually can relay the signal from the one cell to another cell. Then it also can uh, function as an adapter molecule to catalyze the different types of uh, immunological responses whether it is the phagocytosis, antigen presentation, antimicrobial killing or to the inflammations. In addition to that the proteins are also being known to catalyze the tissue repair and as well as the remodeling. So let us start first with the uh, protein function as an enzyme. So the enzyme, the proteins are best known for their role in catalyzing the chemical conversion required for running the metabolism, manipulating the DNA, replications, transcription and translations. So in addition, uh, they are involved in controlling the age of a protein. So what you know is that proteins are working as an enzyme and a function of the enzyme is that it is actually going to facilitate the conversion of the substrate into the product. If the, you see the, uh, the non-catalyzed reactions, the non-catalyzed reactions are going to be very slow compared to the enzyme-catalyzed reaction. So enzyme is actually not only facilitating the 
conversion of the substrate into the product but it also facilitating it at a very very high rate and that's why the enzymes are also called as the biological catalyst uh, biological uh, catalyst right what what that mean is that it is actually going to uh, enhance the conversion rate and uh, it's since these are enzyme you might have seen that we have when we were discussing about the carbohydrate metabolism whether it is a reaction which are involved into the glycolysis or the Krebs cycle there are so many different types of enzyme which are participating into the different types of reactions whether it is a hexokinase or glucokinase or uh, you know some other enzymes. Uh, all these enzymes are catalyzing the different types of reactions. Apart from that, when we are going to discuss about some more, uh, you know, uh, aspects of the enzyme, like where we are actually going to discuss about the manipulating the DNA. So enzymes are also involved in DNA repair and damages. The enzymes are also involved in DNA replications, where the enzymes are actually going to, uh, you know, make the two copies of a particular DNA molecule, or they are also been involved in transcribing the information what is given onto the DNA sequence, and that's how they are actually going to produce the messenger RNA and then the messenger RNA is also going to be translated by the ribosomal machinery. So ribosomes are also being made up of, of the protein and then they are also, there are so many enzymes which are participating into the events. So what you see here is that the enzymes are the, uh, catalyzing the various types of reactions. So on average, what you see here is that on average, almost 4,000 different reactions are being catalyzed by the enzyme. And one of the best part is that it can enhance the rate of reaction as as big as 10 to power 17 folds compared to the uncatalyzed reactions. So I have given you a table where we are showing the different types of enzyme and its different types of properties. So what I am showing is the enzyme like the OMP decarboxylase, staphylococcus nuclease, AMP nucleosidase, carboxypeptidase. Um, ketosteroid isomerase, triosphosphate isomerase, chorismate and carbonic hydrides. And what I am showing is the uh, different types of properties like the half-life. So half-life is uh, very high in terms of the OMP decarboxylase. Compared to that, it is very small in the case of carbonic hydrides. And then we also have the what will be the uncatalyzed rate reaction. So what you see here is the uncatalyzed rate reactions are pretty slow, right? So they are 10 to the power minus 16. Compared to that, we are actually having the catalyzed rate. So catalyzed rates are 39. So if you see the rate enhancement, rate enhancements are 10 to the power 17 in the case of OMP decarboxylase. Uh, similarly, the rate of react, the rate enhancements are pretty high, right? Even if it is very slow, low, it will be low as like 10 to power 6, which is in the case of the carbonic hydrides. So the purpose of an enzyme is not only to catalyze the enhanced reaction, it also are providing the specificity because the enzymes are only recognizing their cognate substrate and that's how they are also bringing the specificity into the system. And you might have seen when we were talking about the glycolysis, the enzyme actually its activity can be modulated by the different types of modifications. For example, we can modify the enzyme activity by covalent modification or the allosteric modifications. So these are the things which are possible in with the enzyme because enzymes are made up of, of the protein and the protein structure can be modulated by the subtle changes in the either the amino acid sequences or the subtle changes in the interaction what are involved into the folding the particular protein. For example, if you do a phosphorylation of a particular protein, then you are actually going to compromise the some of the interactions or you are actually going to facilitate some of the reactions because that depends whether you are actually going to enhance the reactions after the phosphorylation or you are actually going to reduce the reactions. Because in some cases, uh, the phosphorylation is uh, enhancing the reactions and in some cases, the phosphorylation is reducing the reactions. If you remember when we were talking about the glycolysis, we said that pyruvate kinase when it is phosphorylated is less active and when the pyruvate kinase is non-phosphorylated, it is um, uh, more active, right? So that kind of modulation is also possible with the enzyme because uh, they are made up of a protein and the protein structure can be modulated by simply disrupting some of the interactions. 
Now let's move on to the next function and the next function is the reversible binding of a protein to a ligand. So one of the uh, main feature of a protein is that protein is actually can bind to its ligand and that ligand binding is not covalent. It is actually reversible, which means the protein is actually going to form the protein ligand complex. And depending on the concentration of these uh, um, uh, pairs, right? if the concentration of the PL will go up, then it actually can dissociate and give you the protein and ligand. So that's why these, these kind of events are actually reversible. And that's why uh, you can actually be used this for many types of applications. So protein is made up of, of the hundreds of amino acids, but they have a defined CD region where the protein is structured to interact with the cellular molecule to perform the different types of functions. What are the functions? One of the function is gaseous exchange. So we can actually have the gaseous exchange possible simply because the different types of ligand have the binding efficiency to the protein differential under the different environments. One of the classical example is the export and import of the oxygen as well as the carbon dioxide. So you know that when we are running the metabolism, for example, when we were talking about the Krebs cycle, the protein is utilizing the glucose molecules and then it is producing the large quantity of carbon dioxide. So two molecules of carbon dioxide are being produced when we are actually running the Krebs cycle. And these carbon dioxide molecules are not good for the body, right? They have to be removed from the uh, from the cell, right? And how you are going to do that is you are actually going to throw that carbon dioxide into the blood and then eventually it will come back to the lungs, right? And from the lungs, it is going to be exchanged with the oxygen. And at the same time, you also require the oxygen for running the electron transport chain. Remember that we said that the Krebs cycle is evolved into the eukaryotic cell because it is running, it is present into the high oxygen level. And because it has a high oxygen level, the organism could be able to run the Krebs cycle to uh, enhance the energy productions. So gaseous oxygen is required to transport from the atmosphere to inside the body. Iron containing hemoprotein such as the hemoglobin or the myoglobin has active site to bind the oxygen. So the hemoglobin what is present, it is, hemoglobin is present into the blood which is present inside the RBC whereas the myoglobin is present inside the muscle cell and both of these organ, organs are very good in terms of carrying the, ox, carrying the uh, oxygen because the muscle cells are required the oxygen to perform the different types of function whereas the RBCs are having the hemoglobin which have the function to carry the oxygen from the lungs to the different parts of the body. So the hemoglobin is present inside the RBC and at the lung surface it binds the oxygen and then inside the body it releases the oxygen in a controlled manner to provide the oxygen for running the cellular metabolism. At the same time at the tissue site it binds the carbon dioxide and releases it to the atmosphere at the lung surface. So this is what it is going to happen. So this is the lung right this is the lung where you are it is showing the alveoli. So in the outer air, you have a very high quantity of oxygen and very low quantity of carbon dioxide. So because of this uh, difference into the uh, concentrations, what happened is that at the lung side, there will be a very uh, there will be uh, in, in the there will be the binding of the oxygen to the hemoglobin molecule and you see that the carbon dioxide concentration is very high when from the deoxygenated blood, right? So when the deoxygenated blood is going to come, it is going to carry the carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide concentration is going to be very high. So when the carbon dioxide concentration is very high uh, and the low oxygen concentration is low compared to the outside, the oxygen is uh, carbon dioxide is actually going to be dissociated and that's how what will happen is that hemoglobin carbon dioxide complex is going to be broken down and it is actually going to give you the hemoglobin plus carbon dioxide and because the carbon dioxide concentration is high it is actually going to go into the atmosphere at the same time the same hemoglobin because the atmospheric uh, carbon uh, oxygen is high it is actually going to take up that oxygen and that's how the hemoglobin is actually going to form the 
uh, oxyhemoglobin complex and that oxyhemoglobin complex is then going to transfer that oxygen to the different parts of the body. For example, then the oxygen is going to carry through the arterial blood. So, in the arterial blood and then it is actually going to deliver that oxygen to the different parts of the body like the brain cells and at the brain cell side where the you see the, the uh, carbon dioxide level is very high and the oxygen level is low. So, this high level of oxygen is going to be delivered right. The same thing is going to happen the HbO2 is again going to be dissociate to form the hemoglobin and it is going to form the oxygen. This oxygen is going to be delivered to the brain and at the same time this carbon dioxide is again going to bind to this hemoglobin and it is going to generate the hemoglobin carbon dioxide complex and that carbon dioxide hemoglobin carbon dioxide complex is again going to be traveled through the venous blood and then it will again reach to the alveoli and that is how it is actually going to release the carbon dioxide and this cyclic event like where the hemoglobin is going to shuttle between the two events like in one case the hemoglobin is actually going to carry the oxygen from the air and in the other event the hemoglobin is going to carry the carbon dioxide from the uh, tissue is keep happening and that is why the, it is actually going to be maintaining a uh, healthy environment inside the body and that is how it is actually going to give you the, uh, the ability to detoxify the carbon dioxide uh, what is being generated inside the tissue because of the uh, metabolism and at the same time it is also going to give you the required oxygen for the running the metabolisms. Now, apart from this the uh, enzymes can also work as the metabolic intermediate. So, they can also work at the proteins are also can work as a in the metabolic intermediate as a substrate. So, the enzyme accepts the different metabolic intermediates to run the metabolism. In this process, the substrates interact with the enzyme in the active side and get converted into the product following the several reaction intermediates and the products are released from the active side and being used in the cell. So, this is what is going to happen. So you have a free enzyme and this is actually our is the active side right. So, in this active side this is this is your this is the enzymes active side. So, active side is the area where the enzyme is actually going to interact with the substrate. So, when the substrate is going to come it is actually go and bind reversibly with this area and that is how it is actually going to form the ES complex. Once the ES complex is formed then there will be a lot of intermediates right and because of that the enzyme is actually going to be get converted into the enzyme product. Once the enzyme is going to convert the substrate into the product the affinity of the products are going to be less and that is how these products are actually going to be released from the enzyme and this will continue and that is how the enzymes are actually going to uh, uh, keep catalyzing the conversion of the substrate to the product. Now, enzymes, uh, the proteins are also going to function as a cell surface receptor. So, proteins are present onto the cell surface in the form of receptor and interact with the molecule present in the external milieu for many purposes. For example, the LDL receptor present on the cell is used to bind the oxidized LDL and remove the lipid from the circulation. In several cases, the cell surface receptors are recycled back to surface after delivering the ligand into the intercellular vesicle storage. So, functions from the cell surface receptor it actually can do many types of function. It can actually function as a signaling molecule where they can actually give the signal which are going to be received from the another cell or it actually can also function as a food taking up the food material from the external uh, uh, milieu. So, in this case I have given you an example of the LDL receptor which is actually going to work as a uh, catching up the food from the external milieu. So, what happened is that the LDL receptor is present in the form of receptor onto the cell surface and when the, uh, the uh, oxidized LDL is going to interact with this receptor it is actually going to be internalized, internalized into the vesicular structures. Then these vesicles are actually going to fuse with the lysosome and when they will fuse with the lysosome the, the, the lipid part what is going to bind is actually going to be dissociated from these receptors and that is how the lipids are going to be given to the lysosome and from here the lipids are actually going to be released into the cytosol. On the other hand, 
these uh, receptor molecules are actually going to go back to the plasma membrane and they are actually going to be expressed as the ligand again. So these ligands are again available for performing this function which means the, if this recycling of the receptor will be continue and that is how it is actually going to be keep taking up the nutrition from the external milieu. Then it also has the protein function to modulate the different types of immune responses. Uh, for example, the phagocytosis, antigen presentation and the killing of the microorganism. Phagocytosis is a dynamic process by which the pathogen and the unwanted debris are removed or the sca are scavenged from the host body. Phagocytosis starts when the macrophage extends its zeropodia around the foreign particle such as the microorganism and entrap it into the vesicular structure known as the phagosome. The phagosomal compartment subsequently fuses with the lysosome to form the phagolysosome facilitating the destruction of the ingested material into the small peptides. In addition, the microorganisms are killed by the ROS such as superoxide, hydrogen peroxide and hydroxy radical released after the respiratory bust. Oxidized halo halogens such as HOCl is known to destroy the many bacterial components including the nucleotides and the redox enzyme at a very rapid rate. So this is what you are going to see. You are going to see that the cell has the different types of cell surface receptor like you have the complement receptor, FC receptor. This FC receptor is uh, for the antibody. The complement receptor is for the complement. Then we have the uh, another kind of receptors uh, like the LPS receptors and also that then we have the uh, non toll like receptor like the lecithins then we have the scavenger receptors and we have the toll like receptor which are also called as the TLRs. All these receptors are uh, having the their cognate ligands and that is how they are actually going to accept or they are going to recognize those kind of ligands if they are present onto the pathogenic organisms. Once they see a pathogenic organism, for example, here you see that the bacteria is approaching towards the uh, towards the macrophages. It is going to be engulfed. So the cell wall, uh, the plasma membrane is going to protrude from the both end and that is how it is going to engulf this into a membrane bound structure which is called as the phagosomes. These phagosomes are then going to interact with the lysosome and that is how the degrading enzymes and as well as the uh, uh, the low acidic pH is actually going to digest this particular microbes and that is how it is actually going to be destroyed into the phagolysosomes and then from here it is actually going to be uh, excreted out which means the bacteria is the killed bacteria is going to be thrown out. In some cases it is and also be expressed in the form of the peptide and that is how it is actually going to amplify the immune responses with the help of the lymphocytes such as the T cells or B cells. So these lymphocytes could be the T cell or it could be B cell whereas T cell is actually going to secrete the antimicrobial agents whereas the B cell is actually going to secrete the antibodies. Uh, Apart from that, the you see the macrophages in response to these particular events can also secrete the different types of cytolytic enzymes or different types of cytolytic com, uh, uh, chemicals. For example, the hydrogen peroxide, um, superoxide radicals or the nitric oxide and all these are actually going to be uh, antimicrobial in nature. So they are actually going to clear up the infections. Apart from that, the proteins are also involved into the inflammation as well as the tissue repair. So inflammation is required because the inflammation is like the swelling of that particular uh, area, right? So macrophages exposed to the bacterial component or the interferon gamma activate, uh, actively produce wide array of the inflammatory molecule to inhibit or kill the pathogens. They produce the reactive oil species ROS such as superoxide radicals, hydrogen peroxide and the reactive nitrogen species to oxidize the pathogenic organisms. The inflammatory molecule reduces the microbial burden in host but the excess production leads to the host damage as well as the it disturbs the homeostasis. So uh, inflammation is uh, important because it uh, 
reduces the microbial burden in the host and it also stops the, uh, the infection at the site of entry. And on the other hand, if the, there are too much inflammations, then it is actually going to cause the tissue damage and as well as it is going to disturb the homeostasis. Now we talk about the tissue repair and remodeling. So macrophage play an important role in wound healing, tissue repair and remodeling. At wound site, the injury results in the accumulation of the dead and apoptotic cells and cellular debris which will be phagocytosed by the macrophages. Additionally, in a wound uh, bed macrophage secrete transforming, transforming growth factor TGF beta, platelet derived growth factor PDGF and the fibroblast growth factor PDFGF and insulin like molecules to stimulate the collagen production and from the fibroblast cells. Later the macrophage secretes MMPs to degrade the collagen which help the fibroblast and endothelial cell to migrate at the wound site for the new vessel formation. So when there will be an injury and there will be a tissue damage then the macrophages are actually going to perform the different types of functions by the proteins, right? So by different types of protein, whether it is the TGF beta, whether it is PDGF, fibroblast growth factors, insulin-like growth factor, all these are protein molecules which are actually going to participate into the different types of remodeling as well as the repairing processes and that's how it is actually going to help the host or it is going to help the organism to repair the damages. So these are the some of the classical function of a protein what we have discussed. What we have discussed, we have discussed about the functioning of the protein as the enzyme, uh, as, a, as an enzyme. We also discuss about the protein as an adapter molecule, whether they are facilitating the uh, conversion of the substrate into the product or whether they are uh, helping in terms of uptake of the lipid molecules from the circulations and also whether they are uh, facilitating the some of the immune responses. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. And in our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss some more aspect related to the living organism. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you.